everyone patrick ck here with episode 7 of 3d printing with the mono price maker select v2 in this episode i want to focus on our filament supply specifically how the filament gets from the spool to the printer head the typical out of the box spool holder for most printers in this price range consists of a spindle that the spool sits and spins around on the spindle is either attached directly to the side of the printer or to an upright that can be located on or near the printer. The problem with this setup is that it relies on the feeder motor overcoming the weight of the spool and the friction of the holder. To try and not delve too far into the math of figuring out rolling friction coefficients or using an equation to determine the torque needed to overcome the moment of inertia, I came up with a simple way to show how much force it takes to get the spool going using some steel marbles. The setup is simple. I printed a small basket to put all the marbles in. I attached the basket with some thread to a S-shaped hanger that then hung from the end of the filament line which I just folded back on itself to make a nice hook. All we want to see is how many marbles it takes to get the basket from the top of the printer frame to the bottom. The more marbles it takes, the more force is required for the feeder motor to move everything. For all you number crunchers out there, each marble weighs on average 8.5 grams or 0.3 ounces. I'm using a brand new spool, so all one kilogram of weight is in play here. As we start adding marbles, the filament tightens up. Around the seven to nine marble mark, we see the weight of the basket starts to move the spool, but just not enough to free it all the way. Finally, at 11 marbles, the spool starts spinning and we have our benchmark for the stock holder. I ran this experiment a few times and got an average of the same, 11 marbles which basically equals 93 and a half grams or 3.3 ounces. While this may not seem like a ton of weight, during a print the spool gets pulled on by the feeder motor hundreds if not thousands of times. If we learned anything from the last episode where we had to basically glue down the feeder gear set screw, this constant fighting with the spool is not a good thing and could theoretically lead to a premature failure of the motor. That being said, our goal today is to make it as smooth as possible for the feeder to pull the filament from the spool to its ultimate destination, our print. To do this, we are going to install two mods, one to replace the stock spool holder and another smaller filament guide, which you already saw in action during the experiment. In the end, we want to be able to move the spool with less than 11 marbles, hopefully a lot less. At first, I wanted to try a simple holder mod, so I printed Thingy 1805457 by Toasted Silicon. I chose it because again, it was simple. It's basically a sleeve that sits in the groove on the underside of the stock holder spindle that provides a larger surface for the spool to spin on compared to the stock setup, which I thought would perform better because the weight is distributed across a larger area. Unfortunately, I ran into two problems. First, the mod moved around in the groove, which led the spool to settle back after being spun forward a little over and over again. Secondly, and more important, it took 14 marbles to start moving freely. So it was time to move on. I already felt like I wanted to try something different. Maybe something with some nice smooth ball bearings but also one where I could still use the stock holder upright. So I set out to design my own. I started by looking at a bunch of other designs on Thinkiverse. Some simple, some really complex, some really cool looking, and some not so much. After reviewing many other designs, I knew right away a couple things I wanted to incorporate in mine. First is the ability to support spools with different inside diameters by sandwiching the spool between two cone-shaped holders. Secondly, an easy way to fasten the pieces down using a nut and bolt style system. In the end, I incorporated pieces from three other designs. I got the idea for the cone-shaped holders from Undevilger, Thingy 1546811, the nut and bolt design from Forever Winner, Thingy 1241566, and the idea for the bearing placement from Neomig, thingy 180 
Of course, I added some of my own touches to make it all work together. Here is the final design. I know I'm being a little vain saying this, but I think it's awesome. A quick overview. There are five pieces that make up this design. The spool holder spindle, two spool holder cones, a large fastening nut, a small fastening nut, and finally the piece de resistance, two deep groove enclosed ball bearings. More on that one in a second. All these pieces come together like this. The spindle and large fastener attached to the stock upright. The two cones with the bearings embedded in them slide onto the spindle, sandwiching the spool. And lastly, the small fastener keeps it all in place. The small fastener and the small ridge on the spindle are sized to press only against the inside casing of the bearing which is why it sticks out from the holders, allowing the rest of it to spin unencumbered. Now the bearing itself is a PGN 2604-2RS enclosed and lubricated deep groove ball bearings with a dynamic load capacity of 2000 pounds. Yes, this is very much overkill for just a spool holder, but I chose this bearing for two main reasons. First, it's the perfect size with the inside diameter of 20 millimeters, outside diameter of 47 millimeters, and a width of 14 millimeters, which makes sure the spindle is large and thus strong enough to hold everything up. It's also just the right width so that the holders don't lean inward and scrub against the spindle. The second reason was price. At the time, I bought a pack of four for just $10. The two pack was $8 for some reason. Normally these kinds of bearings cost $15 each, but all these prices are constantly fluctuating. Link to the one I used will be in the description. Ultimately, this all means that this thing spins like it's on ice. And while it does have a few more pieces than other designs, it's still simple and elegant. I especially love the large threads and easy to grip fasteners. It just makes everything easier to work with ongoing. Swapping out the spool takes no time, and with support for spools with inside diameters from 35 millimeters to 65 millimeters, every standard and not so standard spool sizes will fit on this mod. Not to mention the spindle and holders can be resized pretty easily to accommodate different size bearings. With the spool holder mod sorted, there's just one more piece to complete this project. That's the filament guide. The filament guide does just as the name implies. It guides the filament to its ultimate destination in the smoothest way possible. This is especially important in my setup because I have the spool mounted on the control unit that sits next to the printer, which means without the guide, the filament would scrub against the brace mod we installed in episode four. Filament guides come in all kinds of designs, but as always, I like to keep it simple. I borrowed a snap-on frame design from Suzu Zoji Thingy 179 2034 and modified the actual guide to add some extra height and a small hook that a roller can slide onto without sliding off during printing. The little groove roller is from a patio door hardware kit, which you can find at any home improvement store. I got a pack of two from Ace Hardware for four bucks. Again, the roller just allows the filament to move around unencumbered. With this snapped on the frame and the roller in place, the project setup is done. Now it's time for the ultimate test. How many marbles does it take to move? Let's watch. One, two, three, four, five, and a little movement, and six. Only six marbles and we are rolling. I ran this test a few times and got the same results. I think this is an amazing outcome. Almost half the weight of the stock holder gets this mod moving. I don't think we could have gotten a better results without going overboard on the design. During an actual print, everything moves incredibly smooth. No lurching from the feeder, pulling on the filament, and watching the roller on the filament guide go back and forth is mesmerizing. It really shows how much the filament moves during normal printing, something that's not inherently apparent normally. 
I believe we definitely achieved our goal. And to be honest, in the end of the day, I enjoyed the process of researching a problem, designing a solution, and implementing it even more than the final product. You can download the files for this mod on Thingiverse at the link in the description. I hope this episode inspires you to look at designing your own mods to accomplish problems you see around you. It's something that we should all strive to do no matter what your profession is. Well, this has been Patrick CK. Like and share if you enjoy this content. Subscribe to get more videos when they come out. Your support on Patreon is very much appreciated. Hope to see you all next time. Thanks, everyone.